Well, your presence here says it all. You understand we have not only a constitutional crisis, but a national security crisis. You know, you all say about conservative leadership. Well, what have they done? Our conservative leadership has failed to understand they were given control of Congress to stop the fundamental transformation of America, not to facilitate it. And then, what did they do? They funded all of President Obama's illegal programs, while at the same time ignoring over his 14 impeachable offenses. This is unconscionable. So, where do we go from there? You know we have as President Obama has said, he wants to fundamentally transform America. Well, what is it? Well, let me tell you. It's un-American. It's anti-Western. But pro-Islam, pro-Iranian, and pro-Muslim Brotherhood. And you have to ask yourself, why would an American president embrace the Muslim Brotherhood, whose creed is to destroy us from within with our own miserable hands and replace our Constitution with draconian Sharia law. You got it right. Now, hey, I'm, I'm always holding back. Now, you understand we have a serious national security crisis. When you have a president who is not interested in America leading or America winning, then you know the greatest threat to our national security resides at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. We have a president who refuses to identify the enemy. It was Erdogan, when he was prime minister of Turkey, who said it best. Islam is Islam. There are no modifiers. Democracy is the train we ride to our ultimate objective, which is to make Islam dominant throughout the world. He couldn't have said it any plainer. Islam is a totalitarian ideology bent on world domination masquerading as a religion. And I got to tell you, I reject the term radical Islam. That implies there's some moderate Islam. There ain't any, and you all know it. But you got to get the word out. Now, you know, when you want to take a country down, oh, I forgot one thing. You know, when President al-Sisi declared in January 2015, he called for a referendum of Islam because of the atrocities that ISIS was committing. He thought it was giving Islam a bad name. Not one Western leader has supported him, nor for that matter has the Pope, who continues to go with his outreach programs, uh, which make absolutely no sense, and declares Islam is a religion of peace. This is nonsense. Now, when you want to take a country down, the first thing you do is weaken the military. That's why sequestration was the perfect storm for the Obama administration. 
the defense deposit budget represents 18% of the federal budget. But under sequestration, they were required to eat over 50%. It's over a trillion dollars in 10 years. It's been devastating. And what has that left us with? We're winding up with the smallest army since prior to World War II, 380,000 soldiers. The smallest navy since prior to World War I, not World War II, World War I. We're down to 273 ships. That's what's left of Ronald Reagan's 600 ship navy. And to put that number in perspective, that's the number of ships I had under my command in the Pacific Fleet. We should have 350 to 400 to meet our worldwide commitments. And you're not going to get there overnight. It takes a long time for those capital investments to come around. The Air Force, same condition. They're down to 12 wings. They should have 18 to 24. And more importantly, their readiness is down to 50% or less. The Marine Corps is suffering the same problems. Marine air readiness is at 30%. They're stealing parts from, magazine, from museums for spare parts. This is nonsense. Now, compounding this situation is the social engineering that has been imposed on our wonderful military forces. You know, what has it done? It's being imposed by people who have never been in the military, will never be in the military, and furthermore, we don't want them in the military. <laughs> they have destroyed unit cohesiveness and integrity and the will to win. And you saw the latest example of that on 12 January of this year, when our two riverine crab in the Persian Gulf gave up to the Iranians without firing a shot. This was a tremendous embarrassment for the Navy. And I gotta tell you, it threw over 200 years of tradition overboard. We never give up the ship. And what made it doubly, you know, that's, you never give up the ship is part of every sailor's DNA. And you can take that to the bank. Something else went on there, I don't know what. Yeah. <laughs> now a few other little things on social engineering. Women in combat. All the studies tell you everything you want to know. It's wrong. There are many viable roles for women in the military. Combat is not one of them. And the latest mandate on transgenders. You know, Dr. Phil McHugh, the lead psych former lead psychologist at John Hopkins University, that this is not a physical problem. Oop, here we go. All right. That's the first time I've heard somebody couldn't hear me. <laughs> he said, this is not a physical problem. This is a mental disorder. It requires understanding and treatment. It is not a civil rights issue. And when the rest of you see Bruce Jenner again, tell him to get a new psychiatrist. <laughs> I want to touch 
on the Iranian nuclear weapon deal. The first thing you have to understand, there's no agreement. Nothing has ever been signed. You know, John Kerry, when he was going through his kabuki dance in Vienna and Switzerland, what he gave up was more than our objectives. He gave up our honor. We gave away everything that we sought to obtain. And then to keep the Iranians at the table, we had to invent new concessions. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. How did we get there? You know, the Iranians. What about the Iranians? I got to divert a little bit. They've caused the loss of thousands and thousands of Americans. And, you know, you've heard that secret negotiations started in 2009. Wrong. Secret negotiations started in the summer of 2008 when Obama got the Democratic Party nomination for the presidency. And he opened up a secret channel with the Ayatollahs. And according to Michael Ledeen, the secret channel was Ambassador William G. Miller. And the message was, and I quote, don't do a deal with the Bush administration. Wait till I'm president. You will get a much better deal. You will see, you will like my policies. I am your friend. Unbelievable. Here is a country that was found guilty by Judge Daniels in the New York District Court for providing the key material and training support to the 9-11 hijackers that took the lives of 3,000 innocent Americans who were doing nothing more than going to work, and this guy tells them he's their friend? To me, this borders on treason. <laughs> now let me shift to Benghazi and Libya where treason was committed. And here we got the pathological liar, Hillary. What went on there? If you take nothing else away, understand, we switched sides on the global war on terror. They knew they were funding Al-Qaeda militias the Muslim Brotherhood control militias, and those rebels in Syria who morphed into ISIS. They provided them training, funding, and weapons. There's no question about it. Now, I can't cover everything in a little time left, but I want to take you, well, let's say one thing. You know, Benghazi never had to happen. Hillary, you know, Qaddafi wanted to go in the truce negotiations. He was ready to abdicate. Two days of negotiations went on. My good friend Chuck Kubik, retired Rear Admiral, was conducting him with AFRICOM, Carter Ham. They were terminated after two days by somebody outside the Pentagon. You can figure out who that was. So what happened? Tens of thousands of people lost their lives. Here's a president who got the Nobel Peace Prize for, for giving a speech, yet he couldn't give a few more days for truce negotiations. Now, I want to take you to the time just before the attack 
And, you know, there were multiple warnings of the attack. I mean, Benghazi was out of control. There were 10 militias running wild. And repeated requests by Stevens for increased security were denied or unanswered. And I got to tell you, who in the hell would know if you provided Stevens with six more security guards? Nobody. The same way Lieutenant Colonel Andy Woods, special security team in Tripoli, if he was kept there until the middle of September, instead of being drawn out the end of August, who would know? Nobody. On the 11th of August, Stevens put out a cable. The security situation is unpredictable. On the 16th of August, he put out another one that said, yeah, what did it say? It said the special mission compound cannot withstand a coordinated attack. On the 29th of August, the Libyan government put out a special alert on Benghazi because of the attacks on foreigners and their installations. The, G, the CIA, GRS security team, and these are the guys that did the 13 hours movie. I personally talked to them. They told me there were 10 to 12 days of advance warning. It was posted each and every day on their bulletin board. So, you know, as a combat commander, you never want to be caught short. So you have to ask, why weren't forces prepositioned? Never happened. And even so, we had forces available that could have been brought to bear. We had C-130 gunships, one at Djibouti, which was seven hours away. The other one, though, was at Sigonella, an hour and 45 minutes away. We had F-16 aircraft at Aviano. And I got to tell you, they're already loaded with their 20 Mike Mike cylinders for airworthiness. They could have been there in two and a half hours. We had a 130-man Marine Force recon team in Sigonella. We had the commanders in Stremis Force in Croatia with their own aircraft who could have been there in a matter of hours. They never got authority to go beyond Sigonella. We had a 65-man Marine fast team at Rota who were purposely delayed, making them change into civilian clothes. Mind-boggling stuff on the orders of you-know-who. <laughs> so here you are coming up in November. Here you got the pathological liar who couldn't handle the security of a pissy ant 13-acre compound in Benghazi, and you now want to turn over the security of this great country to her? No way. That's got to be mind-boggling. So, comes November, you've got to go out and vote and bring everybody with you. We have to take back America. This is a watershed. God bless you all, and God bless America. <laughs>